This is a new Mercedes AMG G63, and it's the most desirable SUV on the market right now. The starting price for a new G63 is around $150,000, but these are currently going for way over the sticker price due to high demand and limited supply, with some examples selling for as much as $250,000. Today, I'm going to review the new G63 and find out what makes it so desirable. I've borrowed this G63 from CNC Motors, which is an exotic car dealership here in Southern California that has an amazing inventory of everything from multi-million dollar supercars to cool SUVs to vintage classics. They have one of the most incredible showrooms of any car dealership on the planet, and you can check them out by clicking the link in the description below. So let's talk G63. Now, as you probably know, the original Mercedes G-Wagon came out back in the 1970s, and over the years, it was updated and improved and refreshed and refined, but it was never fully redesigned until last year. And as a result, demand for the all-new model has been huge. Now, I already reviewed the new G-Wagon a little over a year ago, but that was the base model, the entry-level version, the G550. This is the one everyone really wants, the new G63, the high-performance version of the G-Wagon, which uses a twin-turbo V8 that makes 577 horsepower and 627 pound-feet of torque, which is about 150 horsepower and 175 pound-feet more than the regular G550. This will also do 0 to 60 in the low 4 second range, even though it's shaped like a file cabinet, and like I mentioned, it has a starting price of around $150,000. But that's nothing compared to the market price. Like I mentioned, these are all going for over the sticker price right now, to the point where people who got on the list early at the Mercedes dealer to buy one for the sticker price are now turning around and flipping them for tens of thousands of dollars of profit. Everyone, it seems, wants the new G63. So today, I'm going to show you why. First, I'm going to take you on a tour of the new G63, and I'm going to show you all of the quirks and features of one of the most highly demanded SUVs on the market. Then, I'm going to get it out on the road and see how it drives, and then I'm going to give it a Doug score. Alright, I'm going to start the quirks and features of the new G63 on the outside, and I want to talk about some of the more interesting upgrades you get if you get the AMG version. Now, like all AMGs, it comes with your typical stuff. For example, larger wheels with a different design than what you get in the regular G550, and you also have larger brakes with red calipers to signify this car's performance upgrade. But for the G63, the upgrades go a bit further than that to some interesting items you don't get on other Mercedes models, like, for example, the front bumper situation. You have a more aggressive front bumper, which is typical of AMGs, but you also have this, like, brush guard thing. <laughs> This may be an option in the regular G-Wagon, but it's on all of the AMG models. This is the high-performance G-Wagon, but it's also ready for the brush. When you take it off-roading, it can push aside trees in your very expensive luxury SUV. Not a typical AMG modification. But my very favorite exterior AMG modification for this vehicle is the exhaust pipes. All AMG cars have quad exhaust, two on each side for four total. But with the G-Wagon, there's a problem because it doesn't have rear exit exhaust like all of the other AMG models and pretty much every other car. So what did they do? Well, they gave it quad exhaust anyway. You have two pipes on the left side, and you have two more pipes on the right side for a total of four exhausts. They're just not right next to each other like all the other AMGs. And just like all the other AMGs, the exhaust still sounds pretty good. Take a listen to this thing revving. But when it comes to sounds, the best noise the G makes is not the exhaust, 
but rather the doors. When the G originally came out, it was a military vehicle 30, 40 years ago, and the doors always closed with this very satisfying click sound. This is one of the things people like the best about the old G-Wagon. And so even though Mercedes-Benz completely redesigned the G-Wagon and made a totally new one, they kept that door latch sound from the old model. Just listen for a minute. And if that sound isn't incredibly satisfying to you, to me, it is the most satisfying car door sound, then take a listen to the door lock sound, which is also the old school kind of clicking that everybody loved from the old model. Have a listen. To me, those noises will be forever associated with the G-Wagon and that solid sound that the doors make when they click and when they lock is one of the reasons people love this car so much. Although there is a drawback to that sound. Every other Mercedes-Benz, you can leave the key in your pocket, walk right up to it, put your hand on the door handle and it'll unlock and you can open the door, but not this one. In order to keep that old school sound, they had to keep the old school door locks and door handles. So for the G-Wagon, you actually have to press the unlock button when you approach in order to get into the car. But that's the sacrifice we must make for the perfect door sounds. Anyway, when you open the door to the G, the first thing you notice, there is a little badge inside the door jam that says Mercedes-Benz G, shuckle proved. That's right, this vehicle is shuckle proved. And your crappy off-roader is not shuckle proved. Whatever that means. <laughs> No, apparently that's some mountain in Austria where they test the G-Wagon during development, sort of like Jeep's trail rated badge for the Rubicon Trail, but they stick it right in there and then it says shuckle proved as if you're supposed to know what that means or care. Kind of weird. And next we move into the shuckle proved interior of the new G63. And the first thing you notice in here is that the interior is just a massive upgrade over the old model. I already covered this in my review of the G550, but it is worth noting if you've been in the old G-Wagon, you get in this, you'll hardly notice a resemblance. It's a big upgrade. Now the materials and technology are obviously a lot better than the outgoing model, but to me, the biggest upgrade in here is the interior room. The new G-Wagon looks the same as the old one, but actually it's five inches wider, and all five of those inches have gone into creating more interior space. The best example of that is the cup holders. The old G-Wagon had that ridiculous basketball hoop cup holder hanging off the center console in the passenger footwell. The new one has two rational cup holders side by side in the middle in the center console because now they have room for it. And there's other modernization beyond just that. For example, the gear lever was stuck in the center console in the old one, which took up a lot of space along with the parking brake. Both of those items are now gone. You have the gear lever on the steering column and the parking brake is a little switch in the driver's footwell. And that frees up more room for storage and for buttons and switches in the center console and to just modernize this interior dramatically. With that said, despite the modernizations in this interior, the G-Wagon is still a tremendously capable off-roader and there are still some reminders in here of its capabilities for example over on the passenger side of the dashboard you have a grab handle and this thing is not just for show you can pull this as hard as you can it won't come off the intent is that it gives you something to hold on to when you're going over rocks or off-road terrain and similarly right in the middle of the center console you have your differential locker buttons this is where other mercedes-benz models would have an extra climate control vent but not the G-Wagon. You have the buttons that will lock the diffs and you still have three separate lockers, one for the center lock and then another for the front or rear, which can be locked independently. Now, most people who buy this car probably don't even know what differential lockers are, but they're very useful when you're in extreme off-roading situations. And one of the reasons people pay so much for the G-Wagon is because they know that capability exists. And that's not the only important off-roading button in here. If you go into the center console, 
console, you have a few buttons over on the passenger side. One is marked low range, and that's your low range button, which of course will be useful also in difficult off-roading situations. But anyway, let's talk buttons in this center console area because there are some unusual ones. Over on the driver's side, you have a button that looks like a shock absorber. You press that and one light lights up on the button, putting the suspension in sport mode. You press it a second time and another light lights up on the button, putting it in sport plus mode. You press it a third time, the lights turn off and now you're back in normal mode. So that changes your suspension. Now right above that, you have a little letter M and some gears. That puts the transmission in manual mode. And once you've pressed that, you can then use the shift paddles on the steering wheel to upshift and downshift. Now over on the passenger side, you have the little parking camera button. You turn that on and the parking cameras turn on and you can adjust which camera angle you want. The thing I love about the parking camera display here is that the top down angle actually shows a G-Wagon and not just some generic car, which makes you feel a little bit better about your vehicle than someone with a peasant like CLA or a little plebeian E-Class that doesn't show their exact vehicle. But anyway, since we're talking infotainment system, let's go through some of the interesting quirks and features in here. One is in the parking sensors settings, you can configure the tone of the parking sensors. And while you do that, you can play a song. Here's mine. And next up, speaking of the parking related settings in the G, in the parking settings, you have an option to open the camera cover. And when you click on that, the reverse camera pops out of its little cover, which is in a little circle in the tailgate. Now, this is interesting. When you're not in reverse, that parking camera goes back into the cover to kind of provide a cleaner look in back. But when you go into reverse or when you manually open the camera cover, it pops out. So you're thinking, well, why would someone want to open the camera cover themselves if they're not in reverse and the answer is to clean it in case the camera gets dusty or dirty you can manually open the camera cover go back there wipe it off and next up I want to talk about the infotainment system itself this vehicle like all the new g-wagons has Mercedes kind of dual screen setup but this isn't Mercedes most recent version of this system and as a result it's not as good and I say that because it isn't a touch screen the newest Mercedes-Benz system is called MBU and it allows you to control it as a touchscreen or with this little controller in the center console. In the G-Wagon, you can only use the controller in the center console to control things, and it's just not quite as intuitive or as easy as if you had the touchscreen option as well. It's interesting because this car is probably only about a year old, but it's amazing how quickly these systems already start to feel outdated when new ones come out. And it's the same deal in the gauge cluster. The gauge cluster is a full screen, which is the most modern up to date way to do it and it is excellent. Now you can configure a portion of the screen to show various different information like for example your phone settings or your radio settings if that's what you want to see or your vehicle information it'll show you how much horsepower and torque and boost you're currently using but it just doesn't have the ultimate configurability that the newest Mercedes-Benz MBUX system has where you can basically put whatever you want in that gauge cluster if you want to see something specific right in front of you. Again it's good but it just has already become outdated very quickly. And next we move on to the back seat in the new G63. And the first thing you notice when you get back here is of course the sizing. It's better than the outgoing model, but it still isn't really all that big. Despite the Mercedes G-Wagon's outward appearance and sort of its reputation, it is not a very big SUV. The new G-Wagon is only three and a half inches longer than a Toyota Corolla. And so the result is that the back seat isn't that huge. The front passenger seat is where I would be sitting. And as you can see, my knees are right up against the back of the front seat. There's just not all that much room for your legs and knees back here. Although I will happily admit there is tons of headroom thanks to this vehicle's file cabinet-like design. Now, with that said, there are a few nice creature comforts back here. For example, you have a rear seat climate zone. Back here, you have a third climate zone. And like you can see, you can adjust it with these little switches in the back of the front center console. One thing that is both surprising and unusual in the world of 
back seats is the floor mat situation back here because there are three individual floor mats. You can see there's one on each side and there's one weirdly shaped small center floor mat. Basically every other SUV has one large floor mat that goes across the entire floor in the back seats, but not the G-Wagon. Now I will say one disappointing factor with the back seats in the G-Wagon is getting them to fold flat if you want to increase your cargo space in back. Virtually all other luxury SUVs at this price point have a little button you can push in the cargo area that will electronically lower the seats for a larger cargo area but not the G-Wagon. And when you actually go around to the seat to put it down, it isn't especially easy there either. First, you have to fold up the seat bottom, and then there's a latch you pull that folds forward the seat back in order to get it flat, so it's a two-step process. Far more cumbersome and difficult than any other luxury SUV on the market. It's something to be aware of if you plan to frequently drop your seats to put larger items in back. And speaking of difficult and cumbersome, let's talk about getting into the cargo area of the G-Wagon. I say difficult and cumbersome because it has a rear door and not a tailgate, unlike basically every other SUV. And the reason for that is everybody likes the look of the G-Wagon. You have this squared off rear end with a tire and tire cover mounted on the back but you can't mount a tire on a tailgate because it's way too heavy, so you have to put it on a rear door. And as a result, it opens up like this, and it is quite a heavy piece to open. It can be very difficult, especially if you're on a hill. It's one big, heavy rear door. But believe it or not, the biggest problem with the rear door is not the fact that it's heavy, but rather that they can't make it power operated. Every other SUV and hatchback now has a power tailgate, right on down to ones that cost $25,000. But because this is a door and not a tailgate, it has to be opened manually, which is kind of a disappointment for the $150,000 to $200,000 price point. Now, once you're into the cargo area, the sizing is rather difficult. You do have a nice flat load floor, and of course, because this is a boxy vehicle, you have a tall, boxy space where you can put stuff. But the G-Wagon is smaller than most other SUVs at this price point, and that's reflected in the cargo area, especially on the sides where the wheel arches kind of come in and really compress the cargo area and make it pretty narrow. It is not a huge cargo area back here, but anyway, there are a few other interesting exterior quirks and features worth discussing with this car, one of which is the running lights. You can see their circles. The G-Wagon has this signature front end circle headlight look like a lot of capable off-roaders, but in this case, they've been able to integrate the modern LEDs into those circles, which kind of blends new and old. And next up, another interesting look on the outside of the new G-Wagon is the rain gutters, which are exposed. Virtually all cars have rain gutters on the outside that channel and direct water down the car when it rains or goes through a car wash, but typically those gutters are hidden under bodywork. Now the original G-Wagon had exposed rain gutters because that's just what you did in the 70s, and they've carried that look on to the new model too. Very unusual to see in modern times, probably the last car left with exposed rain gutters. And one more exposed item I find interesting is the turn signal. The signal is mounted here at the top of the front fender instead of integrated into the headlight assembly like basically all other cars. And I have to admit, I really like how this looks. It gives it a very distinctive look and you can see the turn signal being on from the front seat, which makes you feel like you're above everything. And it's just a neat look, again, carried forward from the previous G-Wagon, although now modernized with LEDs. And finally, we go under the hood in the G63, and you can see the powertrain, which is Mercedes' new four-liter twin-turbo V8. They're putting in all of their 63 AMG models. It's a fantastic engine, and in this vehicle, it puts out 577 horsepower and 627 pound-feet of torque. Just massive numbers for a vehicle this size. Zero to 60 is in the low four second range. Just crazy considering the aerodynamics of the G-Wagon. And so those are the quirks and features of the new Mercedes AMG G63. Now it's time to get it out on the road and see how it drives. All right, driving the new G63. It surprises me to admit it, but there is a lot to love about the new G63. And I say that surprises me because the old model 
uh, I really thought was crap. Uh, the interior was not that good. It was not a great car to drive. In fact, it was quite a terrible car to drive. I felt it was vastly overpriced. Um, there were not a lot of good things to say about it. But the new model is a vast improvement to the point where you don't just buy this because you want to look cool. You actually buy it because it's a good vehicle and I think one of the best luxury SUVs on the market. For one thing, this interior, huge step up over the old G-Wagon, tremendously more comfortable, far more interior your space it just feels like a much much nicer place to spend time because it is the driving experience is a thousand times better um, this car is more comfortable than the old model it's easier to drive the steering is a lot better um, vastly vastly improved there are a lot a lot a lot of benefits to the way that this one drives feels more stable feels more planted on the road a far more rational and luxurious car it is far more comfortable than the old one sitting in here it just feels nicer more luxurious uh, you don't feel the road as much it's it's hard to overstate the difference which is actually interesting because they didn't really change the appearance all that much the g still looks pretty similar but it is just vastly better in terms of an actual vehicle now as for the acceleration the amg version <laughs> It's not like crazy sports car fast. It's not exotic car fast. It's not 911 turbo fast. But this is a boxy, blocky SUV that looks like a file cabinet. And that, to me, is the crazy thing. There's an expectation that's exceeded here. When you get in a 918, you expect it to be fast. When you get in this, it's like, I can't believe they've made this ridiculous thing fast. It also steers and handles so much better than the old model. Not only is the ride just far more supple, but they've also been able to make it steer more precisely. I truly can't say enough nice things about the way this car drives. And I know, I know that generally speaking, these are bought by obnoxious people. People who want to show off their wealth, have absolutely no shame about buying an expensive vehicle, throwing it at everyone's face, the, the, the sound of it, the look of it. Um, but in the past, I judged the hell out of those people because they were compromising on everything to get that. They, they were getting a terrible driving experience and a bad car with bad interior and they were paying way too much for it. But now the new G-Wagon is actually good. It is in the realm of the Range Rover, the Cayenne, all of the other best SUVs. And personally, I hate to say it, but I think it's probably the one I would get over those. It's more comfortable. I love the look. I love the technology. Um, MBUX would make things better in here, but generally speaking, this is the luxury SUV standard now, and I think it's a big step up over all the rivals. And so that's the new Mercedes AMG G63. This isn't the fastest new SUV on sale, or the toughest, or the most practical, but it's an excellent combination of all three. Something that's capable off-road and at the drag strip and it can haul your kids to school. And the fact that it's a brand new model that no one else has just makes it that much more sought after. And now it's time to give the new G63 a Doug score. Starting with the weekend categories and styling, the new G63 looks great, one of my favorite SUVs, and it gets a 7 out of 10. Acceleration does 0 to 60 in 4.3 seconds, and it gets a 7 out of 10. Handling is good, better than the old G-Wagon, but it's still a tall, blocky SUV, and it gets a 5 out of 10. Fun factor is good for an SUV, and it gets a 6 out of 10. Cool factor is high, as these are among the coolest SUVs on the market right now, and it gets a 6 out of 10 for a total weekend score of 31 out of 50. Next up are the daily categories and features. This is well-equipped, though not classic leading and it gets a 7 out of 10. Comfort is excellent among the best and it gets an 8 out of 10. Quality is high, the interior is great, a huge improvement over the old G and it gets a 7 out of 10. Practicality is excellent and it gets a 9 out of 10. Finally, value, and here's where it falters a bit. This is a great vehicle but with a starting price of around $160,000 and a current market price that's even higher than that, it's quite pricey even considering how good it is. And it gets a 5 out of 10 for a total daily score of 36 out of 50. Added up in the Doug score is 67 out of 100, which places it here against other new high-performance Mercedes models and other ultra-luxury or high-performance SUVs. The new G63 does well, combining a great interior, great tech, a comfortable ride, and excellent performance, but be prepared to pay big money for it. Ah!